everyone, welcome to our channel Drone Fluence. Drone Fluence is an initiative from National Skills Network where we share regular updates, create awareness and bring you various viewpoints and perspectives from several stakeholders in the emerging drone industry in India. As you must be aware, the drone industry in India is growing at a rapid pace and is opening up several opportunities for both men and women equally. So today to share more information about the drone pilot training, the current and future job perspectives and if educational background really matters to get into the drone pilot training, we have with us Ms. Arundhati P. from Dronacharya Aerial Innovations Limited. She has completed her drone pilot training and is currently working at Dronacharya. So without much delay, let's get into the conversation and hear from her more about the drone pilot training and the other upcoming job opportunities in this area. Before we do, I request you all to please subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to not miss any updates from us in the future. So hi Arundhati, welcome to this conversation on Drone Fluence. We are very excited to have this interaction with you to learn more about you and the drone pilot training that you have gone through at Drone Acharya. So uh, why don't you tell us about yourself and your interest in drones to our audience? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me to this interview. And uh, my name is Arundhati Paramshati. I'm basically from Belgaum. So I'd come here a year back. And I'm, I've been working in Dronacharya for like a year now. Now my position is as an assistant manager in technology. So I have an aeronautical background. I've graduated with master's degree in aeronautical engineering. So through that, uh, the thing is when we learn about aeronautical engineering, it is just all about aircrafts and everything. So the theory all revolves around aircrafts. But the thing is, uh, the evolving technology now that we have is about UAVs, mm -hmm. uh, roughly. And uh, under UAVs, you have these drones, basically. So what I thought was, since I've not learned anything about UAVs in my uh, education, why don't I try this field and explore it even more? Because this actually has future. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, that is why I've stepped into this and that is why opted Dronacharya to, uh, yeah, as a job. Okay, so your interest in drones started after your graduation, you mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, so I understand there is uh, some kind of an aeronautical engineering background for you to take up the drones. So, but do you think educational background does play a role in understanding drones and drone flying? Or uh, can oh. anyone with any educational background take up this? Actually, anyone can, because that is what we are doing here at Tonacharya. We are actually spreading an awareness to all the uh, students of engineering and as well as of 10th, 9th. So we are starting the foundation at the school level so that, uh, see, since I was in an aeronautical background, I know what drones are. But then uh, drones have now evolved in India. They were there before, but then it was banned for about like three, four years. So people don't know what drones are, what they're used for and what applications they have. So anything about drones related should be started from a very, like uh, a very primary stage. Mm -hmm. So now you know what cars are because you see them around. Drones are nothing that you see around nowadays. Yeah. So you have to at least know what they are to yeah. have, uh, have like a future in them. To have a career in that field, you actually have to know what it is. So I feel that is what we are doing. Anybody can do it because drone is nothing, a sort of an aeronautical thing only. Okay. It is comprised of all the uh, other uh, field, I must say, like mechanical is there. Electronics is the most that is involved in any drone. So mm -hmm. electrical, electronic engineers could be like a very big go in an mm -hmm. uh, UAV field and uh, yeah like uh, even a civil engineer we have students from civil engineering and uh, even an architecture people who want this as a part-time job or as a hobby okay. not that you have to have a career in this field just mm -hmm. that you have to have an interest to just give a contribution in this field 
so yeah that is i feel anything from your hobby to your career level uh, this field has everything mm -hmm. So anyone, even from a tenth class background, can take up uh, drone pilot training. You mean? Uh, yeah. It, he ha he or she actually has to have at least eighteen years completed. So tenth is a must, but then eighteen years also. So I feel twelfth should be done, but that okay. is not mandatory. Do it at least wait for two years after your two three years after your tenth. Yeah. And then you can take up this yeah, and have an Indian passport. Okay. Uh, so, how was your training experience at Dronacharya? What did you learn? Uh, what are some of the aspects they taught you? Yeah, so uh, it was really interesting at the beginning because I didn't really think that I need a pilot license. Mm -hmm. So, I am sort of an engineer thing. So, yeah. why am I getting into piloting and all? I thought at first. But then the thing is... Uh, all the things that are covered in this DGCA pilot training is benefit, is a benefit to an individual. So the things that are uh, com like completed in this course is that you have three days of theory. Mm -hmm. Then again, so you will complete everything like from maintenance to what uh, the parts of a drone are and what the DGCA rules are in India mm -hmm. to have been followed by a drone pilot when he, he or she becomes a drone pilot eventually. So you have to know all these things and then you come to simulator session. So that was really interesting. So I, when I saw first two batches come out, the whole process was really interesting. So I thought, mm -hmm. why don't I give this a try? Because now in India, everybody is behind manufacturing and all the drones. Mm -hmm. But who is responsible to fly the drone with the mm -hmm. uh, responsibility that the government is giving yeah. us? Yeah, so you have to have a pilot license and then all the rules and regulations must be followed. So I thought, why don't I try this skill? And the skill mm. is actually enhanced by a simulator training. Mm. So simulator training is just how your aircraft simulators are. Like a okay. aircraft pilot. Yeah, how he or she, like before going into an actual aircraft and flying it, you have to have a simulator, a repl replica of it in a mm. digital way. Yeah. So you fly it and you get a muscle memory developed so mm -hmm. that you know uh, where your drone is flying without even seeing your transmitter. Not that you see your transmitter and drone like yeah. 100 times uh, to do. So that is being done, which is very interesting. And then you have uh, two days of uh, practical flying. Okay. That is a real flying on a advanced drone mm -hmm. that we have. So that is for two, three days. So two days you have complete theory, one day simulator, and then again three days you have uh, the practical flying. So on the third day you have final test. Okay. So you have two tests actually. After theory you have one test of the theory exam, mm -hmm. and then after three days of flying you have uh, the final day on the th uh, final test on the third day. Okay. So this you have complete five days of DGC training. Okay. You mentioned a very good point of developing muscle memory and how uh, it was uh, taught you or uh, taught on simulators, uh, which is also yeah. a growing uh, sector here. Uh, like you develop, uh, I mean, you learn the skills on the go even without uh, damaging the drone, uh, the action. Yeah. So do they also teach you about uh, how to repair a drone or how what to do when, when you get stuck or your drone is stuck somewhere? How who to reach, whom to reach out to. So, are you also trained in such skills? Yeah, so not in a very deep way because mm -hmm. that is something which is another whole sector to okay. how to have a very deep maintenance of a electronic device such as drone. So, here we, have, we are being taught about a very basic maintenance that we as a pilot have to know. So okay. if there is any, yeah, so if, if there is any debris in your uh, motor, how will you know that? How will you clean it? How will you clean your whole, uh, not aircraft, but drone? Yeah. And uh, how will you actually uh, have a frame inspection? If you know there are any cracks in your frame, how will you rectify it? So as such, there is a actually checklist being given to every pilot so that he has a pre-flight checklist in-flight checklist and then a post-flight checklist. 
So these all things he has to, he or she has to know how to handle. So if any situation is being done, like uh, if there is any uh, crash, mm -hmm. if there, like if you crash your drone somewhere, so after that, what steps have to be taken? Okay. So that is also is a sort of maintenance thing that a drone mm -hmm. pilot has to. So yeah, these things we are well um, educated about, but not the deep uh, maintenance thing that you don't open the whole aircraft and start uh, with the electronics thing. You know? But yeah, the basic and the most important things are being covered in this DGC training. Okay. Uh, so there's also a lot of data that is generated from uh, drones. So are you also uh, taught on how to analyze this data or is it a separate uh, entity on its own? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, as you said, it is a separate entity. So okay. we can't actually have everything in these five days. So these okay. five days are basically to enhance your piloting skills, not okay. the ones that are being like a post-processing part or a pre-processing part. So yeah. all these things we have kept another uh, course, which is like GIS, okay. where the drone data is being processed into whatever requirements you have. Like you want to have a 3D map of it, or you want to mm -hmm. either have a mission plan and just get the uh, a report generated out of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I know a report how you generate. So same thing with the drone data. So all these things, like even drone building course we yeah. have. So okay. here we actually teach how to build our, our drone from scratch. Okay. So from where you will get the electronics, how will you assemble it, and then mm -hmm. how the frame has been decided, how you actually come up with these electronics only. Mm -hmm. Like every drone will have different set of electronics. So why are these electronics being chosen? Mm -hmm. So all these things is being covered in different sectors, different like course. different courses. Yeah but not being mixed up in BGCA pilot training since as the name suggests, it's just the pilot training which is being uh, emphasized here. Okay. So yeah, in five days, the theory is important because you know where and how you have to fly the drone. Mm. You have to know where you're flying, how you're flying and what are the consequences that you'll be facing. So all these things have to be known and then the pilot training. Uh, it is not being mixed up as you said with other uh, yeah so now that drones are uh, I mean application of drones are uh, uh, growing in many sectors or many industry sectors are now accepting drones and drones has become an emerging sector in India so when you were doing drone pilot training did you uh, want to get into some specific industry or you wanted to just learn the drone flying or how was it Okay, so as I mentioned previously, I was more of an like engineer girl, yeah. and uh, yeah, I was more into manufacturing part of a drone. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, I thought, uh, actually, Dronacharya has now stepped into manufacturing. Before mm -hmm. it was just the courses and uh, DGCA pilot training. So at that time, I thought. Uh, why, what is the need actually of DGCA pilot training course? Because I myself, with a personal interest, I want to get into a manufacturing sector okay. where I can actually use my engineering skills and everything. So that was it. But then this course will actually enhance your uh, resume as well. Mm -hmm. So any individual who is trying to have a career, uh, like a beginning, he can, he or she can actually opt this DGCA pilot training because it is actually building up your resume in such a way that you don't even know. So having a DGCA pilot training will actually get you into other drone companies as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, where they actually are doing manufacturing things. So they will also have a hint that you know something about drones. It is not just that you know how to fly a drone. You know everything. You know what the parts are. You know what the physics behind the drone is. So mm -hmm. you are actually an engineer sort of a guy who has had a training background in drones. So now you can step into manufacturing like me. So I thought I will have a drone training first. And then uh, as the company is progressing into manufacturing, I will be 
getting into that as well. So here we actually can have projects also being done. Okay. So yeah, Dronacharya takes up projects where you actually have the drone application uh, based project. So like agriculture thing maybe or just a 3D mapping generated for uh, other third party. So that thing we do and then while doing, I even get to know about other aspects. Since this is just the beginning of my career, like I've just stepped out of a uh, bachelor. So I thought, why don't I try everything to just finally decide what my goal is? That's very interesting that you mentioned the projects that you have taken up and how yeah. a drone pilot uh, with the proper license and training can get into many other fields. Uh, so mm -hmm. Arundhati, can you give us a few job roles that are emerging or a few career opportunities for youth uh, to get into? Yeah, so for me as an aeronautical engineer, of course, mm -hmm. uh, there are you, there is UAV design engineer. There is a product design engineer of UAV. Then there is drone pilot, as I said. And uh, other, uh, if you take up courses, like GIS course or drone building course, you may even get into production and the post-processing part, okay. respectively. Like GIS would go into a uh, GIS uh, like in, uh, engineer or uh, developer. But then here you will be having a production engineer who is specialized in UAVs, basically. So those are there. And then, of, of course, a software developer. Okay. So where does this IT or like IT people uh, play a role? Where does this IT section play a role? Is that uh, a drone will have electronics, but the electronics is governed by a set of codes. So these codes have to be, yeah. So these codes have to have certain uh, flow to them. Okay. Or if you want to have some changes been uh, been done, and I like an aeronautical engineer can't do that because I'm not being taught about. It. But then a software developer will of course know where something is going wrong with the code, or I have to change these things to get these things been done. Mm -hmm. So those things a Python developer or a Java developer. So if these people come into room. So that section is there. And then, of course, you have uh, the business part of it, mm -hmm. where you are actually involved in uh, business and sales of drones. Mm -hmm. So that is also a section where you cannot like just ignore that section because uh, the awareness and everything has been started by the business team only. Because mm -hmm. They take you forward and they take your product forward. So, yeah, so all these things, like even to uh, have students at your organization, a business team would do that. Okay. So, yeah, so MBA people also can opt a drone job, even a, a aeronautical engineer, as I said, civil engineer, then you have electrical, electronic, Python, I mean, IT people basically. And, uh, yeah. And so there are opportunities for everyone for, in this field. Yeah, for everyone, basically. Yeah. Uh, so, Arundhati, uh, what would be your suggestion for someone who is interested in drone pilot training? What would okay. you suggest them? Yeah, so drone pilot training would be something that you will be uh, like very new to because that in India is like the first thing which is going on now to train 10 lakh drone pilots. So I urge everyone to actually have this, like to give just a shot to it mm -hmm. so that you know what your um, skills and capabilities are. Because this drone pilot is not just that you're flying somewhere in the garden or uh, in marriages as everybody yeah. has seen, but they have opportunities where you, like you cannot even imagine even a construction job would need a drone nowadays to have everything like been done from inspection to a report generating thing. So uh, the, the drone pilot training course is very interesting in a way that you get to know the theory behind it, which is also interesting. 
simulator section, as I said, is also very interesting because uh, you get to at least feel how a drone is flying digitally at least. Yeah, so that is there. And then you have this flying uh, session where we take you to uh, our nearest flying ground, which is Kherjiapur. So that is a place where you have like the whole green zone is there and you will love flying drones there, which is quite uh, engaging. Like, because it is not just that you're flying anyhow and uh, we are just asking you to just take off and go anywhere you want. But we are actually teaching you the skills that would make you even a film cinematographer, okay. like aerial cinematography, yeah. So all these things would be involved and that is what makes this course very different from all your theoretical and the nine to five job that you're doing. So, yeah. Apart from what all we discussed, is there anything else that you would like to share with our audience? Uh, actually, it is just the awareness that I want to spread about UAV. And it is not just that you're building up UAVs and selling them or buying them. Or It is not just that. You have to now know, uh, since it is all made in India and everything, now drones will be coming up in India, manufactured in India. So you have to know how to fly them also because there are certain set of rules being set by the government to actually now use in, uh, drones in India. So you even can't go in, in a wedding and start shooting there. Mm -hmm. So that thing will also need now a drone pilot license. Okay. So have a drone pilot license to get into a UAV industry. Mm -hmm. So it will have many applications, I assure you, because even a project of, say, um, the inspection of a chimney, so mm -hmm. very basic thing a drone can do and a very uh, life-saving thing a drone can do is like a firefighting drone. So you can actually save lives with drone or be someone who's actually more into inspection and everything. So drone has a very wide range and India would have a future in drone industry if youth like us take up uh, trainings and courses related to UAVs. It was very interesting talking to you, Arundhati. We learned so much and I'm sure our audience also will find it very interesting and useful. There were many insights like uh, like the chimney inspection that you just mentioned. Uh, it is something uh, unheard of and it does need a lot of awareness creation uh, among people in India, uh, the various applications of drones in various industry sectors. So thank you for throwing light on those topics too. Uh, so we are very happy to have you in this conversation. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you.